Hey guys, Casey Cockridge. Uh, a lot of people ask us, well, I got a, a bar that's actually pretty small, and how do I fell bigger trees than when my, when my bar will go through the whole entire tree. Uh, in this video we're going to show you how to do that. Basically in a nutshell what it is is you're going to start one side and then finish it on the other side. Um, super simple, super easy to do that. Um, this video is going to walk you through how to do it. Uh, we got a pretty good sized pine tree we're taking down in the campground. We're actually going to cut pretty low because uh, they have a tendency of putting steel into the trees. So we're going to see if uh, we can get out of this without dulling a chain. Basically, um, have no uh, no hammer and wedges today. We uh, forgot to put them into the truck because we had to switch trucks today. But got a rope in the tree when the skid steer is going to pull it over for us. So today, uh, traditional uh, face cut. We're going to bore into one side of the tree, do half the work, come on to the other side, and do the other half of it. Um, if you want to see how to bore trees and, and things like that, we have uh, videos on our uh, on our channel. If you just uh, click the link below, you'll be able to get to that video. So here we go today. Basically, I'm just using my sight line on top uh, to establish the direction that so I'm just going to go in, make my face cut around about a 60 degree angle or so. It doesn't have to be super specific or anything like that. This is just a flopping on the ground kind of thing, so it really doesn't matter. I'm going to try and keep uh, all my planes on the same level, so nothing kind of goes crazy and it keeps me in having good practices all the time. Just going to go down. Um, some rules of thumb that people stick by, uh, go in about 80% of the diameter. So if it is a 10 inch tree, the uh, distance that the that the face is across is about uh, eight inches or so, and uh, go through, make it, and do my plunge cut. So here we go. <laughs> One of the problems that you're going to come into in a situation like this is it's easy to tip one way or the other way and what you end up doing is I come out and I see how level the bo bottom of my bar is with the ground. That helps me gauge how far down I've gone in and make sure that this uh, this face is relatively level or perpendicular to the tree is what I was is how I try and do it most of the time so if the tree has a little bit of a lean to it a lot of times my face will have a little bit of a lean to it that way it makes it so that the fibers when they bend they're bending in nice uh, nice 90 degree angle so that they're the strongest that way <laughs> Now the key is going to be to line both of the cuts up. So what I end up doing is I'm going to get my eye so that way I can look right straight down my top cut and as I'm doing my bottom cut and coming and coming around this bottom side, I get it so that the tip of my bar is in line with this top cut. So when I go to the other side and I finish off this piece of wood that my bar hasn't cut yet, I hit relatively close so that way my cuts are nice and lined up and I don't have to do too much work to get them to be nice. So basically now I'm just going to stick it right in my top cut, come right down and uh, don't bury my tip down into it too much because then I'll go be going below, uh, below my bottom cut that I've made over here as well. So I'm going to basically <laughs> try and keep this nice and level and go right around and connect the dots basically. <laughs>
basically it. Sometimes with larger trees, you'll have to have to fix uh, the sides or whatever, so that way it, it, if you, so that way they both all come together, and this is a nice straight line. If if you don't, what ends up happening is it could change a little bit of the angle that the tree is uh, going to be going, but that's if you go in like a couple inches or whatever. But that's basically it. We went down nice and low. Um, so that way, uh, that way there's no steel or anything like that. And a lot of times with pines and, and oaks and things like that, there'll be a little discoloration in, in the wood um, if there's a piece of steel that's in the vicinity, basically. I don't see any of that, so so far, so good. Gonna go to the downhill side, bore in, do half the half of it, and then come to this side, bore in, do the same thing, leave a little bit of back strap, we'll turn the machine on, and that guy's just gonna pull it over for us. And it's basically just a safety so we didn't have to do it. Um, if it if the tree didn't go because we forgot our wedges today. <laughs> so you can kind of see what I did there is I used uh, my bottom face to help align my saw with my the with the plane of my cut. So that way when I bore in here it's not at a little bit it's not at a different angle. So that way when uh, I'm finishing, if the tree goes a little too early, what can happen is it can take my saw with us, with me if the two cuts kind of miss. So I kind of want to line the two cuts up as best as I can. So that's why I went through here. <laughs> I established uh, the, the plane that my saw is going to be on. I kept that by just going straight back and then right in. So that way this height right here is the same. So I'm just going to plunge straight in. That way it's nice and kind of parallel with each other. Another trick for you. And basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm bringing it back and I'm checking uh, my bar right here with with how parallel it is to this right here so that way um, when I go in this my hinge size is relatively uniform all the way across sometimes you can have it so your tips back a little farther and it makes it so that way it's uh, kind of v-shaped in the back and it makes it extra big so then the tree won't want to go over when you want it to so you'll have to do a little stuff in uh, later to get it to do it if you're using the hammer wedges or using the machine I'm going in and all of a sudden my saw dives in, dives in a little bit. That's where I, I kind of hit my other two cuts. So my cuts are, my tips are good, but I'm a little tiny bit off on the planes, but that's okay. I'm gonna go right in, uh, bury the saw nice and far in, go all the way back so I have a little bit of back strap. We'll get the uh, skid steer all ready to go and it's just gonna pull it over for us. <laughs> bottom cool thing that you can do um, what a lot of loggers will end up doing is you see them actually bore into the tree 
and they'll use the attack side. So they'll go through with the top side and, and start coming backwards. And that's what I did on this side. And what it did is it deposited a whole bunch of this sawdust right here. So there's a bunch of sawdust in that cut. And what that sawdust does is that acts like a wedge as well. So that this will help uh, pile in there and help keep the uh, tree, if it does sit back on you a little bit, you can get your bar out still. <laughs> and when you look at what happened here, there was a section where my, my, my bar went in pretty, pretty well, and then it didn't. Uh, so my two planes were just a little tiny bit off, but that was perfect. And you want to be a little bit low. If you're high, then, you're, then this, your saw would end up being in the wood of the, of the tree if it kept going on. But if you're a little bit low, it will stay inside the stump. So on your second cut, it's okay to be just a hair lower. So that way it doesn't end up going with the with the tree when it falls over. But when the tree is too big for your saw, that's something you can do. Um, if we're up a little bit higher, sometimes it's easier to get them to line up a little bit nicer. Uh, but we don't really care because we're just going to cut this nice and low anyway. And we are just trying to keep uh, away from the steel. So if you guys have any, uh, any questions, leave them below. We'll try our best to answer them or answer them in a video as well. And just like and subscribe and uh, hopefully this helps and that allows you to tackle some big trees that are relatively uh, in your, in your uh, uh, skill, skill level. If you could do it, we would love it. So, you, so that way uh, slush trees for all the tree guys to cut because they just keep growing.